Hi guys, Mark Daniel Nelson here. Today I want to talk about my vocal template, specifically on this pop track. This is a song from an album I mixed last year called Don't Give Up the Fight by Ali Yorande. I want to go over a little bit before we kind of go down the chain about my philosophy about vocals. Now usually with vocals, I'd like to express that I don't go after the super, super, super compressed vocal, but I do appreciate a vocal that sits really forward in the mix. Now, getting that forward mix without super hyper compression is kind of tricky, but I found that by doing a serial compression, multiple in one chain, it kind of adds what you need out of all of it. It does kind of the trick without it sounding hyper, hyper compressed. Now, in between these compressors, I will do EQ, I will do DSing. All this kind of added into this like cocktail really gives the vocal. So let's hear the vocal for a second. Don't give up the fire. Don't give up the fight Push a little harder, run a little farther It's worth another try Why you still got time Be a little braver, aim a little higher Just don't give up the Right, so what did we do on this vocal? The top, top thing I usually like to do is cut off all the crap out of the bottom of the vocal. And for a pop track like this, I don't think I need terrible amount of low mids or bottom end on the vocal. If you leave in too much 200 hertz in that kind of area, maybe 300 hertz, you're gonna really mess up your imaging with the synthesizers and guitars and stuff. So I like to kind of scoop that out just a little bit and let the vocalist stick up above it. Now past that, I actually like to do a little bit of hyper kind of editing. And for this song, there was some serious issues around one and 2K. Now that's just above the honkiness sound and below the harsh S's sound. And you can't really hear it terribly until you kind of take it in and out. So I'm gonna just solo her vocal and I'm gonna take this plugin in and out. Now this is the FabFilter Q3, and it's doing the multi-dynamic. And what it's doing is just dipping it out in a multi-band sense. Now I'm gonna to listen to it without first, and you're gonna focus when I engage it, you're gonna hear this, okay, that's pulled out. Now, like I said, it's below the harsh kind of S's area, and it's above the honky sounding area. And it's kind of a smoother thing until you take it out, you go, oh, that's it. So let's hear it for a second without. Don't give up the fight. Don't give up the fight. With it. Push a little harder, run a little farther. It's worth another try. Why you still got time? Without. Be a little braver, aim a little higher. Kind of feel it at the Just top of your ears. What that's doing is it's taming a little bit of that aggressive kind of honkiness, but it's a, taking a little bit of that and just smoothing it out. That goes right into my first compressor, and it's usually this MJUC. Now, it's not doing much. If you Don't look at it, it's only hitting at the hardest point, Don't maybe a DB. And it's got a very fast attack and pretty fast recovery. This is going to take some of my peaks but soothe it out at the same time. What I want to do after that is kind of bring up some of the information of the low level, which I'm doing here. Just don't give up the and then below it, if I need, it's going to kick in some of the more honkiness sound on the multiband, and it should be subtle. I mean, it's, I'm barely seeing it move. After that, I would do an inline kind of delay, which I'll automate between the verses and the chorus, and then a second de -esser. Now this is my second de -esser. If you look at on the track before the bus, I have de going here. Now this is the old waves, which I actually really like. And then this is the fab filter, which is a very different type of coffee. It's, it's just different. And combine, after you kind of squeeze things down to where you need it to be, it kind of rounds it off a little more. After that, I have the decapitator. And what this is doing is adding the fur that it needs to sit above in the pop track. Then past that, I have the tube deck. 
Now this guy in line on most of my vocals, depending if it's folk, bluegrass, rap, hip hop, any kind of music, pop, it's usually going to have three of these plugins in it. The, the Pro-Q, the MV2, the MJUC, and the Tube Deck. Now, it can be in a combination of those, but after that, I kind of it's kind of uh, up in the air. Sometimes I'll put a distressor after the Tube Deck, and sometimes I'll put the L Ray, depending if it needs a little more glue. Don't give up the fire. Don't give I have a little bit of 10K on the Poltec style. I can take out. It's worth another try. Why is still now down the line after that is the L Ray. So if I pulled in, let's say, all three of these compressors at once, you're gonna see where the most is gonna be hit. Don't give up the fight. Don't give up the fight. Push a little harder, run up father. It's worth another try. Now, if you see, they're all working differently. They're not going after the same thing, which is obviously doing what it's intended it's supposed to do. It's just trying to actually tame each element when it brings up certain things. Now, my philosophy, I know there's like, I know there's a lot of engineers that actually like to do compression and then sum it down to one channel. I like to do it in serial just because it seems to take care of something, whatever happened before it. And with this and pulling in the MV2 in the center, this is the trick right here. Because if I take this out in the middle of the vocal, you're going to hear a difference and you're going to go, okay. And then I'm going to engage it and you're going to go, that, that's the secret. If you go slow compression on top of this, it's going to just be a little more mushy versus the MJUC, which is a very fast compression. Let's hear it with and without. Don't give up the fire. This is with. Don't give up the fire. And here's without. Now it's not just the volume, because obviously that dropped when I bypassed it. But if you noticed and you go back and listen to it, there's volume on the vocal that's still the same level as it engaged. It's just most of it is down which is showing you that a lot of that low stuff is just falling through. So a limiter is only going to squeeze it, and a compressor is going to actually add too much. So if you just pull this in right after a fast compressor, it kind of levels it in a very unique type of way. And then after that, you can go and you shave off with your deesser. Now, the reverbs for this song are custom, obviously, to what this song is needing. So I don't want to go too much detail into that, except for if you look at my automation, let's say the verses are dry, here's my delay sense. Now those are all automated as well. Going down to, those are eighth note delays, and then if you go to the sixteenths, those are on its own. There's only one spot in the beginning. But as far as the reverbs and such, I have, I think, the Valhilla plate and the long reverb on this. So the sea change style reverb that I was talking on a different episode on, and then the Valhilla blended to create a little bit of different atmosphere. So the long is actually lower. Let's listen to it one last time with the compressors open again. 